All right, thank you, Dave Mecklenburg, and thanks to Festival Traders for having me back once again. Today I want to talk about getting into new trends early with two of my favorite patterns for doing that, the bow tie and the first thrust. Obviously, I want to thank everybody for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. There's a disclaimer screen. If you get really bored, you can go to my website and read it. It's actually quite interesting though. If you read the fine print in there, it says things like if you smoke after sex, you're doing it too fast. So they're a lot more interesting than you would think they would be. Usually I sum it up. I used to say what Dave says and then a friend of mine, Greg Morris, said all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I thought that was a, a better way of summing up a disclaimer screen. Now, there's a lot of information that I'm going to present here, but this is not a one-and-done type of thing, and everything I do is fully disclosed, so there's no magical indicators or anything. Everything is just uh, very basic, and, and more often than not, I just use the blank chart with the occasional moving average, as you'll see here in just a few seconds. But if you go to davelander.com slash fest, I have a bunch of special offers for you, including a $100 gift certificate which you could actually use over and over and you could actually buy all three of my books in PDF format and then I have a free weekly webinar if you want to come to that too if there's any follow-up questions and I am available uh, to reach I answer my own emails eventually but I do answer them so don't worry about it if I go too uh, a little fast or a lot of material because there will be follow-up information and, uh, and also I do a webinar every Thursday now uh, and oh, by the way, if you do request my slides, which which is on that page, just give me a, a day to get everything put together because the slides, usually I put the slides together uh, last minute to just see how everything shakes out. So uh, give me one day on that, and I'll have those ready by tomorrow afternoon. But if you put your information in, I'll get it uh, assimilated tonight, and then, like I said, by tomorrow I'll be there. Now, why are we talking about getting into new trends? Well, the reason we're talking about this now and I think it's a very timely topic is because winter is coming. I don't know if you any Game of Thrones fans out there but uh, that bastard Jon Snow's been complaining about winter coming for a long long time. I think it's been what six years now? It looks like winter did finally come. So there will be another bear market. Now I'm not getting all crazy bearish on you but the reason I want to get in front of this is I don't want to, like six months from now or I hope it's six years from now but I don't want to show you signals after the fact and have you say well why didn't you show us before it happened so I want to show you these transitional patterns and you could use them to keep an eye on the overall market I prefer trading individual stocks but these same patterns as you'll see in a few of these slides also work in other markets such as gold, forex, foreign indices etc. I think technical analysis is technical analysis because human nature doesn't change. The fear and greed just trans, uh, transcends all markets and also all time frames. And if we have a little time towards the end, I'll, I'll throw out a few things that you might want to do in Forex. But I prefer stocks as a general statement because they tend to be more inefficient. They can make larger moves. For instance, and I don't want to make it sound like every setup is like this, but we've got one in the portfolio now, it's up about 260%. And obviously you're not going to get that kind of move over a relatively short period of time in Forex or, or something like gold and markets like that. It will take a little bit of time to develop. Now, how do I know that there's going to be a bear market? Well, I don't, but I can tell you two things. Markets go up and markets go down. Now you're probably thinking, duh, that's a bit of a Captain Obvious type of statement, but when, not if, when this market does begin to turn, you're going to be surprised at the number of people that will fight it. And it's like they're fighting the last war and they fail to realize that the market has turned. So what I want to talk about today is some patterns that will help you recognize that the market may be turning and, and hopefully we dodged the bullet today. It was kind of ugly though and we haven't made forward progress in some time. Now keep in mind that we're not trying to outsmart the market. I'll leave that to the gurus who predict early and often. It's, it's, I know people 
who have been predicting a top for this market for the last several years, kind of like the Starks, you know, predicting winter is coming. And they just keep predicting over and over. And the first day the market has a sell-off, they claim they nailed it. And, and just just don't believe all that. It, it, it just notice the number of predictions that they make that never come true. What I am suggesting you do is just pay attention to the potential change in tide. For instance, the patterns I'm showing you are right now unfolding in the banks, insurance, material construction, and quite a few other areas. And I wouldn't I wouldn't rush out and start shorting like crazy now, but you might want to honor your stops on your longs and let things shake out just to see if this is going to be another correction. Now, there's an old Wall Street adage, a rising tide lifts all ships. And recently I read in a behavioral finance book, I think it was Galakovich, I think, or uh, one of those books, where he said a rising tide lifts all egos, which I thought was kind of interesting. But a corollary to that is a falling tide will sink all ships. So it's important to recognize when the trend may be turning, and this is regardless of what market you're in. And by the way, I have a longer presentation that I do on this, but just a couple of points from that presentation. When it comes to shorting a market, you're going to see quite a few short examples in today's presentation. I'm not a huge fan of shorting, but one of the things that shorting does for you, it's not that you the only way to make money, it's, it's not that it's just the only way to make money in a down market, but it also helps you to see both sides of the market. My friends who run a lot of money and tend to be long only oriented, they tend to always see the glass as kind of half full. So that's one of the issues that I see with people who don't short, and and seriously, you know, you, why would you be a pessimist if you're long or only? You would have a natural bias for the long side. Now, keep in mind, we're not trying to catch a top, and we're not trying to catch a bottom. We'll leave that to the gurus, and we'll leave that to people what big egos. What we are doing is we're identifying when a trend may be coming to an end and a new one may be beginning. But we're going to wait for markets to actually top out before looking to short. And we will short at the first signs of a correction. I'll explain that in a lot more detail in a few minutes. And then we're looking to short if and only if that downtrend begins to resume, the new downtrend that is. Now on the long side, we're looking for markets to bottom out, and we're not trying to pick the bottom down here. One of my sayings that I like to joke about is it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. If you guys have been trading for a little while, NASDAQ probably seemed pretty cheap in 2000, was it 2001 or 2000 when it was down 50%, but then it went down another 30% from there. So we're waiting for that rally off the lows. And we're looking to get in at the first signs of a correction. Now, there's two types of tops that occur. I'm going to show you a pattern for each one of them today. Sometimes a market could have more of a process type of top, like you see on the left side here, where the market gradually rolls over and then has the first signs of correction and then begins a serious downtrend. And then sometimes it can be an event. The market sort of falls out of bed. I guess insurance might be a good example recently, especially today. And then you're looking to get short on that first signs of a pullback. And then conversely, on the long side, you're waiting for a market to bottom out and to begin rallying. And again, sometimes it could be more of a process, and sometimes you get a sharp thrust from lows. It could be more of an event. So the easiest pattern to recognize when a trend may be turning is what I call a first thrust. And the rules are really simple. And what amazes me about markets, and I've, I've gone on that holy grail hunt, and I've plotted 15 oscillators and Fibonacci and counted waves, and I've done everything throughout my life. And it just amazes me that when you peel away all those indicators and just look at price, the answer is there. And other than the occasional moving averages, as I said earlier, I don't use any indicators whatsoever. So with this pattern, again, real simple, we're just looking for a major low. By major, I'd like to see multi-year low, ideally all-time lows, 
because the most amount of people, as you'll see in the upcoming slides, are going to be on the wrong side of the market. And again, we're playing that human psychology. Everything I do has a very strong psychological backing to it. And I do a lot of research in the human psychology. And you'll see on my website, I often talk about trading psychology. But the trading psychology in, in the technical analysis that I do is actually it's built in to read the psychology of the market participants. And of course, at the same time, you have to control your own. But that's another conversation altogether. Now, again, we want a major low. We want a short thrust high. And this is relative to the volatility of the stock. You're going to see some examples in a few minutes where it might be 10%. And you'll see some other examples where that thrust from lows, believe it or not, might be as much as 75%, especially at a lower price volatile stock. And we're looking to get long on the first signs of a pullback. We're only waiting for a one little bar pullback. And the reason for that is other people might be waiting for a deeper retracement or be measuring some sort of retracement or something like that. And if you're willing to get in at the first signs of a little pullback, just a one bar pullback, then it's possible that these people will get trapped or remain trapped on the wrong side of the market. So that's the psychology behind that. And then we're looking to enter if and only if the setup triggers. In other words, the stock or whatever other market you're trading would have to rally. Now, here's an example where a stock was in a long, long, long-term downtrend. And then it made it all-time low. Now, again, we're not trying to catch a bottom. We're going to wait for that stock to rally off its lows. And then we'll look to play the first pullback. Now, this doesn't look like much down here, but we're going to zoom this in. That little move there is 75%, believe it or not. Very volatile stock, and it has a sharp thrust higher. So let's take a look at that. And it looks a little bit more like this textbook picture that I showed you a few minutes ago. Notice again, new low, sharp thrust, first little pullback. So let's look at that zoomed in to this chart. And you can see all-time low here, nice thrust, higher, very obvious thrust. You could draw a big, I like to draw big blue arrows on a chart. In this case today, they're red, but usually they're blue. And then we're looking to get in on the first signs of the pullback. So that would just be a little one more pullback like we have here. But in this particular case, it pulled back a little further. But you don't want to, again, wait for this deeper pullback to occur. So again, all-time lows, big thrust. And then there's your pullback. Now on the short side, same sort of thing, but just flip the chart over. You want to see a major new high, ideally an all-time high, and then a big sharp thrust lower. That's, again, relative to the volatility of the underlying instrument. And then you're looking to get short after the first pullback, but if and only if it triggers an entry. So let's look at an actual chart on that. At the beginning of 2016 and 2015, financials and banks were providing us with a lot of shorting opportunities. In fact, you can see, going back to that portfolio, you can see that we were 100% short as far as the positions to the portfolio. And that's because the market was rolling over, the sectors were rolling over, and we were getting the setups. It's funny, people, people who uh, relatives and friends, they, they ask me about the market when the market's rolling over, and I tell them it's rolling over. They, they're like, you're always bearish. I'm like, no, I've been bullish for the last <laughs> seven years. It's just when I get signals, I take them. As Greg Morris once said, he used to run about five billion bucks. He said, we, take, we treat all signals as if they will we, we'll become the big one. We take them seriously. And he also said, says you could... It says whipsaws are frustrating, but bear markets are devastating, and you could survive a whipsaw. You can't survive devastation. So again, all-time highs, and then looking for a sharp thrust lower. Now, I actually use my setups in a vacuum, but I will pay attention to things such as double tops and classical technical analysis. I don't trade directly off that technical analysis, but I do use it to help back up my setups. And again, we have a pullback, and we look to get short as that market begins to sell off. Now, as far as gradual rollovers, the bow tie could be a great pattern for that. And some people like to quantify things. I'm a discretionary trader, but a bow tie can give you a good feel that the trend may be turning or may have turned. 
Now, I'm not a huge fan of indicators, as I said earlier. An indicator doesn't indicate anything, but it can help to illustrate what's on the chart. A lot of times I'll see a stock looks like it's rolling over or, or currency or whatever, and when I put the with moving averages on, they've already crossed over, suggesting that, hey, guess what? That market has rolled over. So they can help to indicate, I'm sorry, illustrate what's already there. And this is a really simple pattern. We're just looking for these moving averages to flip over from downtrend order to uptrend order for longs and then vice versa on the short side. And we're using a 30-day EMA. Don't worry about the math because you're any program out there calculated, even free programs on the Internet. And then we're looking, we're using a 20 EMA and a 10 simple moving average. And again, we're just looking for them to flip over. And it'll make more sense once we actually look at it. Now, again, I'll give you my slides so you don't have to uh, take a screenshot of this or worry about all the math or whatever's in here. And I also will give you some free reports on this. And again, if you want to take advantage of that uh, promo code I'll set up tomorrow, you can download all three of my books. So I'm not, uh, don't worry if I'm going quickly through all this. But looking at actual examples will make a little bit more sense. Notice the 30 was above the 20 and is above the 10. And then notice they come together at what I call a fulcrum, nice and tight. Sometimes you'll get what I call a sloppy bow tie to look kind of like this. I'm not as excited about that as I am a market that looks like this because this means that all the cycles are changing quickly. And then again, we're looking for them to flip over to uptrend proper order. It should look like a bow tie. We're looking for a minimum of a one bar pullback and looking to get high above that pullback if and only if it triggers by rallying. And again, here's another example. Now, you can't see it, but this market was in a very long-term downtrend. And you can see the moving averages were, the longer-term moving average, averages were above the shorter, 30 graded, 20 graded, and 10. And then notice they flip over. And then the 10 is greater than 20 and greater than 30. And this is after all-time lows in this particular case. So again, we're looking for that one bar pullback followed by a trigger, and in this particular case, the new uptrend began to take off. Now, there's some very important things about these transitional patterns, especially when they're coming off of all-time highs, and that's where you really want to pay attention. So right now, S&P 500 recently made all-time highs, NASDAQ even more recently. So if we start seeing some of these signals, it's going to pay to pay attention. Now, the reason the all-time highs are all-time lows for longs is important is because the most amount of people are going to be on the wrong side of the market, or at the least, the most amount of people will have the wrong opinion. And eventually, as that market begins to slide, they'll get forced out. So this is, for instance, a weekly bow tie in the S&P 500 way back in 2007, 2008. You can see this market rolled over long before the bear market of 2008, 2009 that the media talks about. And everybody is happy when a market is making new highs because everybody's making money. Anybody who bought the market, that is. Now, once that market begins to drop, anybody who is still long that market, the further it goes down, will become unhappy because they're losing money. Now remember, people buy and sell markets or stocks for a variety of reasons, and a lot of those reasons have nothing to do with the underlying fundamentals or stock or whatever the case may be. They might need some college money for junior, and they might have some Harvard ed education money saved up, and if that market keeps dropping, they might have to send them to a junior college. So here's an example. I think this company went bankrupt, but you can see it hit an all-time high and then had a nice thrust lower relative to the volatility of the stock. It should be obvious. If you were in longer-term trend-following mode and you got stopped out, then it's probably a, a serious move lower. And then again, we look to get short on a pullback. So in this particular day, it was an official setup, but then you can see this market actually pulled back a little further. Now here's an example of a stock that had an all-time low after basing for quite a while, then it made a bow tie to the upside, 
and notice that by the time it set up, it cleared all this overhead supply. It was up here in clear air, so to speak, and then it took off from there. And again, always wait for a trigger. Sometimes I'll recommend the stock, and six months later, somebody will complain to me they're down 50% of the stock, and I'm like, I never recommended it. Now, we'll, we'll argue back and forth a little bit, and then I'll go back and look at my recommendations and say, oh, I did recommend it, but it never tr triggered. So it's amazing. I mean, that's another lesson in and of itself. It's amazing how much trouble you'll stay out of by waiting for a trigger. In other words, avoiding losing trade. Now, here's one we looked at earlier. It's also, it was a first thrust, as you can see, nice little thrust lower. But if you didn't notice that pattern, you could notice the bow tie. Now, again, I'm not a huge fan of indicators, but if you're learning how to trade or you're new to these transitional patterns, then it's okay to wait for something like a bow tie while you're in a learning phase because it's a lot more, a lot easier to recognize. And then again, it triggers and sells off. So here's that bow tie we looked at earlier off of major lows, and this is what happened afterwards. We were able to stay with this for about a year or so. So it turned out to be a, a decent trade. So that's the advantage of these transitional patterns is the chance exists to get into a new trend early. Now, it's not going to be as accurate as trading longer-term trends and waiting for a pullback, but the chance of making a big, catching a big move like this makes it all worthwhile. And everything I do has a heavy dose of money management into it. And we actually take partial profits and we trail a stop higher and make a transition from a short-term trader to a longer-term trader. Again, all the articles, and you'll get that from my books if you decide to uh, download those. Now, if you have a little bit more experience trading, you want to look for first thrust first instead of waiting for that bow tie to form because in this particular case, the bow tie forms here, but you don't know when it's going to set up, and it might be a long time before it actually sets up. Again, with these process type of tops, it happens pretty quick, and you're not going to have that bow tie. So again, the question is a big question mark like, where would this actually set up if you waited for this bow tie, okay? Now, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. If you're newer to trading and you're not familiar with the volatility of the underlying instrument, you don't know what quantifies a sharp thrust lower or qualifies, however you want to look at it, then by all means, use the bow tie. Just remember that you're going to miss some of these fast moves lower. Now, Here's something that amazes me and is awesome is that all major tops or bottoms will have a transitional pattern such as a bow tie or first thrust. And I had to trim my slides down for tonight, but I have dozens and dozens and dozens of examples. And this is the euro going back several years, and I think this might be a weekly chart. And you can see it made a nice bow tie right after all time highs. And it was a back-to-back -back signal in here. You can see this one really didn't materialize, but it never did get really past its old highs. So if you could take the setup and then have a stop at the old highs, sometimes you can catch an amazingly wonderful new trend very early and make it worth your while. This is bonds going back a few years. You can see when they topped out a few years ago. And I could go on and on. Uh, Foreign indices, the DAX, EWG, and ETFs uh, had a weekly bow tie right before a major bear market. Now, speaking of weekly signals, you want to pay careful attention when you have a weekly signal off of major highs and major lows. So a major sell would be like off of all-time highs back in 2000. Look at that bow tie in the S&P 500. And look at this bear market that followed. Pretty amazing stuff, right? Take a look at this bow tie in the buy. Pretty serious bull market followed. You had a bow tie sell. Pretty serious bear market followed. Now, it took a while for this bow tie to form here. In this particular case, it made more of a first thrust. And this was especially true in the daily chart. But you can see the market still, I think, tripled from that level. So there was still a pretty good run from that level. 
Now, minor buys occur, occur over multi-month highs, so in this case it's barely a, a couple of year high or a couple of year low. But the major signals come off of major, major highs and major, major lows. For instance, this was a 13-year low, I believe. Now, getting back to the weekly signals, we had a weekly bow tie sell signal back in late 2015, and this is what got me really nervous about the overall market. Right now, we have a daily bow tie down signal in the Russell, and I'm not too worried about that, but I'm paying attention. But if we get a weekly signal, it could get fairly ugly. As you just saw, every bull and bear market in the S&P for the last 20, 30 years had a bow tie pattern. Now, this one did materialize that big, but it did drop 18%, and the media calls a bull market at 20%. So that's a pretty serious drop. So I'd strongly urge you to brush up on these transitional patterns, especially like while the market is looking a little questionable. And I hate to use the word hope, but I hope the market continues to go higher. But just in case, pay attention to these patterns so you'll be uh, ready when, not if, the market begins to slide. Now, again, this is not one and done. If you want to go to this daylander.com slash fest, you can get the promo code and you can get information on a lot of other things and it's going to bring you to a thank you page and then I have even more information there. I can keep you busy for a long, long time. Get to know me first. You don't have to spend any money. Just get to know me. Get to know the system. Get a good feel for it. And then if you want to get more advanced, then I'd love to have you. Also, you can contact me. Here's my contact page. You can go to that page and then uh, you can shoot me emails from there. And I said if we had enough time, I mentioned something about Forex in case you guys are into Forex. I'd much rather prefer stocks, but I do trade Forex. I do have some open positions on in Forex right now, actually. Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to look for a major daily bow tie high, and then I like to look at the hourly chart and look for a bow. I'm sorry. I like to look for a major daily high, maybe a multi-year high, ideally all-time high. And then I like to look for an hourly bow tie after that. And then my stop usually goes in right above that high. I might be wrong a couple times, but then eventually I get it right. For instance, now I'm short the New Zealand dollar versus U.S. dollar. I'm short the euro versus GBP. And so far, those markets have had some decent moves lower from that pattern. So I wanted to throw that out. Markets are markets. Again, patterns are patterns. I focus on stocks, but I will trade other markets, and then obviously all the things I say about trading psychology apply to all markets.